How's it going, you big beautiful bastards? Welcome back to another NFL career resimulation. Today we have the Ohio State running back, Eddie George. So I was I've been dying to do like a big beefy running back, and I figured Eddie George is one of the like hardest runners probably in like recent history maybe in the history of the nfl he is 6'3 230 he's a big boy and also being an ohio state fan i have a bit of a soft spot for eddie george not that i ever got to see him play i mean i probably i might have i can't remember how long he played till but like i don't personally remember seeing him play but i've seen highlights and i know the man was just a tank running through people so you can see we got 23 years old 20 number 27 eddie george coming out of ohio state university he's currently projected the ninth pick in the 2024 nfl NFL draft he's an 83 overall running back which is higher than every other player in the draft other than Marvin Harrison and once again I go back to yes maybe I made him a little too good but we're here to watch him so I might as well make him better than he did better than any other rookie in the draft especially when he's a legendary player i'm pretty sure eddie george is a hall of famer and so let's jump into the draft let's see what happens here cardinals have the number one overall pick that is the team we are currently on they take jared verse first the chicago bears have the next pick and they take marvin harrison jr the commanders are probably going okay they didn't take caleb williams the jets might take caleb williams we go on to the bucks the bucks end up taking caleb williams the chicago bears have the next pick they don't take him the new england patriots he could end up in new england and he He's going to the Patriots who does oh my god wait I that's exciting he's gonna basically be the focal point of this offense because their quarterback situation is terrible with Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi and all of this is happening as I'm going to the Steelers Patriots game this Thursday night recording this on Tuesday after Kenny got her ticket prices for that game plummeted so um I went out and I bought three tickets to that game and me and a me my friend and his girlfriend are going to that game which i can't wait for i took work off friday to go to that game i'm trying to get this video done before thursday so that i can upload it for then and i know i said i threw my upload schedule out the window which i'm trying to do but this video still is probably going to come out on thursday maybe wednesday night and i apologize again for after the pat mcafee sim not having a video out um i decided to take last weekend to kind of just have a bit of a relaxing weekend i kind of just sat down didn't really do anything because i just i needed a weekend to decompress after thanksgiving thanksgiving weekend was fun going to the Cavs game everything was really cool i just genuinely i, I needed to sit down and relax for a minute because it had just been such a long weekend as we go into the adjust lineup page you can see that we are still rocking with mac jones here Ramondre stevenson has been moved to fullback due to the acquisition of eddie george they have jake funk still here funny enough actually this is crazy Jake Funk's uncle was uh, my high school gym teacher. Crazy, because we were still in high school at the time, I think, when Jake Funk was drafted, and I remember him talking about it. We look at our receivers, though. We still have Devontae Parker, Juju Smith-Schuster still here. Who is this? Uh, Douglas. It's not demario douglas i honestly i that name sounds familiar i don't know if he's a patriot though we do still have hunter henry we lost mike gasecki then defensively christian gonzalez and matt judon are basically our best two along with jabril peppers he's an 87 in this game that's actually pretty sick i didn't realize jabril peppers was such a high overall in this game so let's sim to the playoffs in eddie's rookie season as we sim through this i want to take a minute and say thank you to everyone at this point in time we are approaching 950 subscribers which it feels like every video i'm saying like we're up to a certain certain point it's insane to see honestly because i feel like just a week ago i was talking about 900 and now all of a sudden we're almost to 950 um thank you everyone that subscribes that watches the videos that leaves a like that comments that just anything with it it means so fucking much yeah so thank you i just i don't know what else to say about that other than just to keep saying thank you in eddie's rookie season they end up missing the playoffs they had the number 16th ranked rushing offense ninth rated total offense so the offense didn't do too bad they were nine and eight they probably barely missed the playoffs they were like that mid-range team they might have been a nine or ten seed the bills won the division at 11 and six like you'd expect the dolphins kind of fell off a little bit when nine and eight as they're currently winning the division in real life i can say mac didn't do too bad mac he had a lot better season than i think you'd expect out of mac jones rushing eddie popped off he had 287 carries for 1300 yards and 12 touchdowns in a rookie season that's pretty damn good he did it looks like somewhat split carries with Ramondre. and he almost had 100 carries for 350 yards and six touchdowns eddie had 12 catches for 162 and a touchdown as well that could potentially win him offensive rookie of the year but i'm i feel like that award's probably gonna end up going to a quarterback here no it did it didn't he's offensive rookie of the year eddie george beats out trey benson he beats out jj mccarthy emeka Ebuka, along with rope i can never say his last name 
Odunze? Is that how you say it? Or is it Odunze? I honestly don't know how to say Rome's last name. I know he is one of the top three receivers in college football. He also ended up on the Steelers, which if they're going to trade Deontay Johnson like all of the Pittsburgh fan base wants him to do, me, not me personally, I think Deontay's great. I think he maybe he does stupid stuff. Who doesn't? People give him a lot of shit for celebrating when they were down two touchdowns to the Cardinals, which I get maybe he shouldn't have been, but what do you want him to do? You want him to just sulk and cry about it when he just scored a touchdown? The dude, just let him play football. Just like that, we're going on to his sophomore season. Um, That's another thing, too, I wanted to say. The Steelers lost to the Cardinals, man. That hurt so much. So now as we go on to year two, though, Mac is still here at a 78. I, wow, we don't have a backup quarter back that's the punter juju is now up to receiver one they lost Devonte parker to mario douglas is receiver two hunter henry has superstar dev and there is eddie george at an 89 overall x factor following winning offensive rookie of the year maybe i mean the rushing this team should be fine it's passing the ball i'm a little worried about mac jones needs to be able to put up more points and more yards but we'll see if they can put it together and make the playoffs this season we've been unlucky with the past couple running backs we've done i think ap made a little bit better of a run than bo but bo didn't do anything and ap had an opportunity eddie at least one offensive rookie of the year which i think is the first out of the last three that we've done to do to do so that was a short run as good old paul gaffney here he gets fired so i'm imagining they didn't make the playoffs we'll go jump in as a new coach who could we make the coach of the new england patriots instead of having it be chris dale you know we're bringing julian edelman back julian edelman's coming back to new england i think i definitely sp- butchered his last name there but that's fine that's fine we'll deal with it so let's see if julian edelman can turn this around for his former team where he was a pretty damn good receiver so this season was really bad they went three and 14 the 31st rated total offense 30th ranked rushing offense with an 89 x factor eddie george who in the last game of the season had 139 on eight attempts and two touchdowns oh how were we bad if eddie was doing things like that well mac had under 3500 yards for only 19 touchdowns and 10 picks a 60 61% completion percentage. Rushing, Eddie had 267 attempts for 1,280 yards and eight touchdowns. Not the best. 68 broken tackles, 168 yards after contact. Receiving, Eddie had 30 catches for 203 and two touchdowns. I don't think that's going to win him any awards this season. We'll take a look. Those Joe Burrow is your league MVP. Joe Burrow is also offensive player of the year, which usually doesn't happen. Best running back went to Isaiah Pacheco. It doesn't even look like our boys on this list. He is not. So there's no Eddie George on the best running back list as this team was pretty bad. They went three and 14. Hopefully Jules can come in here and turn it around for them. We'll see what happens as we go on to year three. So we got a trophy for winning a free agent bidding war for a 90 plus overall player. And I pray it's a quarterback. Oh my God. It was a quarterback. We got Brock Purdy. Big cock Brock is here in New England. The man that is the favorite to win NFL MVP right now, which is wild to say. But now Demario Douglas is receiver one. They drafted a new receiver in straight here. Juju is down to receiver three as he is still rocking with us. Eddie George is up to a 93 overall with his X factor. Hunter Henry is a 78. The offensive line has basically remained the same. We do have a new left tackle here. I, I can't believe we got Brock Purdy. I can't believe Brock Purdy's a 96 overall. I'm here for it. Let's go. Brock is about to carry this team. And so in year three, we finally make the playoffs. We still have the 26th rated passing offense with Big Cock Brock coming in, but the 10th rated rushing offense. So Eddie Cook. Brock ended up throwing 3,500 yards, 27 touchdowns, and five picks. Cleaning up those turnovers was huge for this team. Eddie had 312 carries for 1,558 yards and 12 touchdowns. Easily his best season by far, yardage-wise and touchdown-wise. It's the same amount he had his rookie season. Receiving, he had 28 catches for 274 yards and two touchdowns. So that is a 14-touchdown season out of Eddie George. We'll take a look, see if he is in the best running back conversation. He might not have won it, but he should at least be in the conversation, you'd think think he's on the list but he's not really even in the conversation being down an eighth Damian Pierce Javante Williams Isaiah Pacheco Najee Harris and Josh Jacobs round out your top five for that as we go here into the wild card round we're playing the Buffalo Bills a division rival the team that actually won our division and we were playing a 99 Josh Allen still have Stephon Diggs and Greg Rousseau we strike first though with a field goal and then they let him get a touchdown right back currently second in inches with a minute and a half to go in the third we do have the ball on the Bills 15 we're gonna see what happens here i want to see eddie cook real quick can see purdy purdy is wearing tom brady's number 12 oh my god that should be illegal purdy's gonna actually run play action he had eddie out in the flats wide open he's gonna throw back across his body and find juju and now coming out on what is most likely the last play of the third quarter brock is 
in the shotgun. He's got Eddie out to his left. He's actually going to throw it to the end zone. Brock Purdy gets his team on the board. And we didn't even get to see Eddie cook, but Brock cooked. And that's all that matters. The defense needs to make a big stop here. And they just let Josh go right down the field. Now we're back to a four point game. So we come out in the I formation to start this next possession. Uh, Eddie is not very deep. It doesn't look like, so it's probably a handoff and there it is. There's Eddie George. He finds a hole, gets around one guy in a nice run there for nine. He's got 12 rushes for 77. This is a team that's actually utilizing the running back that we gave them. Unlike the last two, three tight end set here. They honestly could run this if they really feel like it, but I feel like, yeah, hand it to Eddie. Eddie finds a hole up the middle, gets stood up though by two guys after a gain of six, which is a pretty good gain there. Brock comes out once again under center. He's got duos to each side. He is throwing it. Quick throw is broken up by the defense. That's Trey White. Speaking of injuries, I'm pretty sure Trey White tore his Achilles this year and is out for the year in real life too. Brock is dropping back to throw over the middle. What a play. Oh my God. God, what a play by the corner. He read that like a book, and Brock throws an interception. Guess that's what happens when you don't have three all-pro receivers, or two all-pro receivers and an all-pro running back and all-pro tight end to throw the ball to. I'm just kidding, by the way. I actually really like Brock Purdy, and I don't mean to shit on him because they just killed the Eagles, and all of a sudden, they're down 31-13, to and they're going down the field, and they're going to score, make it 31-20, to but the game's over. They're going home in the wild card round. Josh threw four touchdowns. That's basically what did it. How many of those were to digs? I bet you Diggs had at least two. Actually, Johnny Wilson had two. Stefan Diggs had one. Who the hell is Johnny Wilson? So he does have two years left under contract. Um, We'll take a look at the team. We still do have Big Cog Brock here. Straight is now receiver one as we've lost Juju and Demario Davis. Or Demario Davis. Wow. Oh my god. So Eddie does still have two more years under contract as we take a look here. We lost Demario Douglas, it looks like. As straight is now receiver one. They have Cam Campanero now at receiver two. He's a 70 overall. Leak here is also a 70. So the receivers have regressed pretty damn bad over the past couple of years. But Eddie George is up to a 96. Big Cock Brock is a 97. And Hunter Henry is still here at Superstar Dev at a 77. So there's still some offensive weapons. Just the receivers are definitely not a part of that. I figured that was going to hurt the lack of receivers. They had the worst rated passing offense in the league and went eight and nine and missed the playoffs. But the fourth rated rushing offense. So Eddie had to have been done really well this season can see Brock only threw 3,160 yards, but 26 touchdowns and three picks is a very good rating. Rushing, oh my god, Eddie. Uh, he had 298 carries for 1,711 yards and 12 touchdowns. Even receiving, he had 38 catches for 328 yards and six touchdowns, so he had over 2,000 all-purpose yards and 18 touchdowns. That should that should win him best running back. It doesn't win him offensive player of the year. That goes to Lamar. Uh, we go take a look at best running back, and he actually loses it out to Damian Pierce. Offensive player of the year race too. He was also in fourth behind Damian Pierce, Jamar Chase, and Lamar Jackson. So just like that, that we're through year four. Eddie had the best year of his career by a mile and we move on to year five where it is his last year under contract here in New England. Year five, Eddie is a 98 overall now. So he'll probably be a 99 going into free agency. We did get better at receiver. We have straight still here at an 84. He's got superstar dev now. Dontavion Wicks. Um, who does he pay play for? I heard the last name Wicks just the other day. It's not the Packers, I don't think. I'm trying to think of, let's take a look here. We'll see what teams he's played for. Green, it is Green Bay. Okay. Top of that, they still do have Hunter Henry here. He's a 73 overall. He's down to normal dev. Big Cock Brock is a 97. He lost superstar dev somewhere along the way. Eddie still has his X factor. So Eddie should cook again. The rest of the team with the receiving core getting a little better, it should help Brock and should push this team back into the playoffs. So the improvement to the receiving core really didn't make a difference. They still went eight and nine. The offense definitely did a lot better. The 17th ranked total, 15th ranked passing, and fifth rated rushing offense, which means again, our guy Eddie George had a very good season, but we take a look at Brock. Brock again, he, Brock didn't do bad. That's what I'm saying. Brock, he's keeping these interceptions really low. Mac Jones is still here, by the way. He's just a backup. He's still hanging out. Brock threw 3,600 yards, though, 25 touchdowns, four picks. Eddie did go down a little bit in yards and touchdowns. He had 290 92 carries for 1,500 yards and eight touchdowns. Receiving, he had 24 catches for 161 yards and a touchdown, which is still a pretty good season all around out of him. I don't know if that's going to be enough to win an award this season. He should have won 
one last year, but he didn't. He is not offensive player of the year. He is also not best running back as he is. He's on the list. He's all the way down in ninth. Okay, so he wasn't really even in the conversation for it, but he was at least on the list. And now all of a sudden, Eddie George is going into free agency. And does he decide to stay in New England? Last we checked, his interest to resign was very high, so he might. And in year six, we are back. We are cooking, actually. Brock and Eddie George are both 99. Straight is an 86. Wix is still here at an 81. Hunter Henry's still around at a 71. <laughs> He's just hanging out, having a good time. He's along for the ride. We'll see if year six is the year they finally put it together. We should take a look at Eddie's contract real quick. He is back on a three-year deal worth a 17 and a half or 17 million in the last year. That is a very high paying contract for a running back. So he's locked up here until year eight. We'll move on to year seven or move on through year six right now and move to the playoffs. We'll see what happens. See if this team can make it. They've been struggling to do that the past couple seasons, but you have 299 overalls in your backfield right now. You kind of have to this season. This has to be the year you put things together and finally prove it or else it might be the end of Julian Edelman's coaching tenure in New England. And um, there it is. Yeah, Julian Edelman's gone. Who do we bring in now? Do we bring Gronk back? Do we bring Tom Brady back? Maybe it's Brady's time. It's Brady's time to shine. Brady's got to do what Belichick couldn't and bring this team around. None of these coaches are as good looking as Tom Brady. Um, Here, we'll just take Tom Brady and Julian Edelman have the same face. That's all I got to say. As we take a look, the only thing in the green was our rushing offenses. They were in ninth. Everything else was bad. The total offense, we were 32nd. Dead last in the league in total offense. As we take a look, Brock had 3,100 yards, 24 touchdowns, 6 picks. We go to our boy Eddie, who had 287 carries for 1,617 yards and 10 touchdowns, 95 yards a game, 320 yards after contact, a 78-yard long. That's pretty damn good. Receiving, Eddie ended up with 38 catches for 297 and a touchdown. As we look here, he could be best running back. It's going to be close. Drake May for the Minnesota Vikings is your league MVP. And Brendan Allen is a running back, and he's offensive player of the year. So we're going to go to best running back, and it's Braylon Allen. Eddie George is in second. I said Brendan Allen at first, but it's Braylon Allen. Eddie George is in second. He's getting close to that best running back spot once again, but he ends up just missing it every time. So just like that, we move on to year seven, where we're going to get Tom Brady's first year as the head coach of this team. He has a 99 Brock Purdy and 99 Eddie George, as long as Brock decides to stay. Eddie, we know, is at least under contract for two more years. Brock, I am not entirely sure how long he's here for. So Brock and Eddie are still here. We lost our receiver one. Wick somehow still remains receiver two, and um, Hunter Henry's finally gone. We have man here at tight end now. Eddie is Eddie regressing is kind of weird. He's a 97 in year seven, but I also think he is 30 years old. Now he's 29, so he's about to be 30, but to be down to a 97 already is kind of weird. I didn't expect him to regress like that. We'll sim to the playoffs now in year seven. We'll see what this team can do. They're starting to put it together a little bit, and this is your first year as the greatest player in NFL history as your head coach, so you have to win something. And there it is in year seven. They did finally put it together and make the playoffs. Wow, holy shit, this team turned it around. Everything except for passing offenses green, seventh rated rushing offense. The defense was seventh rated overall as they're once again playing the Bills though. So then their second playoff game in Eddie's career, they're playing the Bills again. 25 touchdowns, five picks for Brock. We go look at Eddie who had 285 attempts for 1,571 yards and 20 touchdowns on the ground this year. Receiving Eddie had one of his worst years though with 13 catches for 114 and no touchdowns, but rushing, he had 20 touchdowns, man. He's got to be in the best running back conversation this year. He is not offensive player of the year. He's actually even behind Braylon Allen, so he's not going to get best running back. That's going to go to Braylon Allen, and Eddie George is in second again. Man, how what did Braylon Allen do this season, huh? Shit. Okay, fine. He had like 200 more yards and the same amount of touchdowns. Fine. Fine. I guess I can't say anything. So now we go into a wild card game against Josh Allen. D Dalton Kincaid's progressed up into this top three, along with Greg Rousseau still being here. Our top three, Eddie George, Brock Purdy, Devin Edwards at corner. All right, here we go. Early in the fourth, they have the ball down at the 34. This could be a potential opportunity to hand it off to Eddie. Eddie's not even in on this play. Why is Eddie not in? What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing to Eddie George? You're going to hand it off and have it not be to Eddie George and this guy's just gonna go oh my god there's Eddie as they come out under center and this is gonna be a play they end up passing it as they have a three tight end set isn't it no they hand it off to Eddie Eddie cuts it back and Eddie's gonna go he got in he got in 
run. What a run. He could reverse field, cut that upfield, and ran over somebody to get into the end zone. So now we have to hope the defense can hold him. The defense does force a punt, but we have to punt it right back. The defense needs to make another stop, and at right before the two-minute warning, they let them score. Now it's just under with just over two minutes to go. The Patriots have an opportunity with the ball, and they have to come out and score here. They could win off a field goal, though. That's a big thing here is the Bills couldn't get the two-point conversions, so now it is a one-point game, and a field goal wins the game. They're at their own 46. They're, the clock is running still. It is now second and one. Eddie is in on this play. This could be a handoff, and it's not. It's going to be a quick throw to number 10. Who is that? Which receiver is that a tight end? That might have been man, actually, the tight end. And now with under a minute 20 to go, Brock is in the shock, and he's going to play action to Eddie. He's got all day. He's chucking it up deep. And oh my god, that was way too risky of a pass to be thrown right now, Brock, in, in a one-point game. Once again, there's no Eddie on the field here on second and ten. When they're in these shotgun formations, it seems like the backup comes in a little more. Brock on the run, throws across his body for a completion and a gain of two. Now on third and eight, this is a big play once again. Eddie is not in on this big play. It's going to be a handoff on a third and eight. What are you doing? Now it's fourth and six. You have to go for this. Why would you put yourself in this situation? I mean, I get it. I guess you wanted to gain more yards and try and catch him off guard but now on a fourth and six he's throwing over the middle and brock misses the throw and the game is going to end there they lose to the bills in the playoffs once again by one point eddie did have a sick touchdown run though it just wasn't enough it got them the lead but the defense couldn't make the stop and now the game is over and they go back to new england and cry in foxborough brock threw no touchdowns josh threw three that's basically the story of the game we'll take a look at how eddie did knowing he got the touchdown this game eddie had eight carries for 51 and a touchdown he is actually produced more than any other running back we've done when it comes to the playoffs and the regular season at this point. And just like that, we move on to year eight, which is going to be his last year under contract. It'll be Tom Brady's second year as the head coach of the New England Patriots, where he was able to get them to the playoffs for the first time in like three or four years. So as we go into year eight, Eddie's last year under contract, Big Cock Brock is still here at a 98. Eddie is still regressing, which is kind of surprising to me, only being eight seasons in at a 94. I guess his size, though, it's kind of understandable because it's hard to maintain a long career at 6'3", 230. We now have Thompson here at receiver 2 and Roberts here at receiver 1. Wicks has dropped down to receiver 3 as he is still here. Man is still a superstar dev tight end. We'll see what this team can do for with Tom Brady as their head coach in year two, in his second season in year 8 of Eddie George's career. We'll see if they can make the playoffs. It's looking like Eddie might be a career Patriot. Sadly, in year 8, the team misses the playoffs. They have the 18th ranked total offense. The 29th ranked passing offense is Big Cock Brock is not slinging it the sixth rated rushing offense though as eddie continues to just tear this league apart defensively they have the sixth rated defense sixth rated defense but the offense wasn't good enough to get them more than seven wins as they finish under 500 brock threw 3300 yards for 22 touchdowns and four picks rushing we had eddie with 286 carries for 1500 yards and 14 touchdowns receiving eddie had 17 catches for 121 and two touchdowns which means in season awards he should be in the best running back conversation again but probably not win it yeah as Braylon Allen has just he is progressively taken over this league at running back for the Chargers best running back once again goes to Braylon Allen Damian Pierce and Jonathan Taylor are both above Eddie George's he was fourth on the list so he's still yet to win that award but he was offensive rookie of the year in 2024 so that is his lone award that he has won so far in his career as we move on to year nine where he is going to potentially be a free agent I mean he's going to be a free agent and he could potentially leave it just it it's he's most likely coming back he had high overall interest to re-sign so as long as the team wants to bring him back eddie george is going to be a patriot for more years that or he retires to my surprise as much as he's regressed recently i wouldn't put it past him as we go into year nine now of eddie george's career he is back he's a 92 overall so he is still here he's regressing though slowly brock purdy is still here at a 98 roberts is still receiver one receiver two we have a new one in linton here man is now uh, an 80 overall he lost his superstar dev he's down just star dev so the offense is still looking kind of grim they're not looking great as we simulate through what is this year nine i think i think i already said that i, I just I, my brain scattered and after year nine tom brady gets fired so that's not looking good for what this team did this season i can't even imagine they were close to going 500 all right i'm not gonna actually make bill belichick but we're gonna make big bill that's what we're gonna call him we're just gonna go big bill 
None of these guys look old and depressed. That's the saddest looking man I could find. Okay, that's Bill Belichick. They were terrible. Wow, they were the 25th rated rushing offense after he had dominated the league for how long they finally fall off that he's not even going to be in award contention. Brock actually had one of his better seasons here. Eddie was not even over 1,000 yards. 241 carries for 971 and 9 touchdowns. We'll take a look at his career stats as of right now. Currently, Eddie has 2,555 carries for 13,052 yards and 100 and five touchdowns. He has almost 2,000 yards after contact, a 99 yard long. That is impressive. His longest run of his career was 99 yards. So just like that, we go on to year 10. I didn't take a look at what his contract was like going into that season. So we'll see if he comes back. And if he is back, then we'll take a look at his contract. If not, you have to assume he might have retired. And Eddie is back. He is a 90 overall going into year 10. He is 32 years old. We'll take a look here at his stats and contracts, see what's going on here with his contract. He's got one one year left making 15.1 million which is still really high for a running back he has low overall interest to re-sign i wonder if that means he has low overall interest to even play anymore but we still have big cock brock at a 96 man got his superstar dev back he's an 81 linton is a 75 roberts is up to an 88 a receiver one and just like that we'll sim through year 10 of eddie george's career with big bill for the first time as head coach so we made the playoffs we won the division and not even just made the playoffs we went 11 and 6 in year 10 big bill comes back he returns to new England where he's probably like 80 years old at this point and he brings them back to the glory. Brock had one of his worst seasons so far for this team with 3,300 yards, 17 touchdowns and 10 picks. Eddie was back 290 attempts for 1,574 yards and 20 touchdowns. Receiving, he didn't do too much with eight catches for 48 yards and no touchdowns, which like that's fair because he's not really a receiving back. AFC Offensive Player of the Year ends up going to Lamar Jackson. I'm going to bet you best running back is Braylon Allen. Yep, and Eddie George is in second second right behind him. He can't get past Braylon Allen. Take a look at his career stats once again, where he's up to 2,845 attempts for 14,626 yards and 125 touchdowns. He averages five yards a carry for his career, 2,288 yards after contact. So I really don't think he's on any all-time list right now, but now we get to play a home playoff game in Foxborough against Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. T-Law is the only main person from this roster in real life that's left in that top three. Let's see what Big Cock Brock can do here in the Eddie's 10th season. Eddie, just I just want one playoff win for him. Like, he hasn't even got to win a playoff game yet. Oh, my God. What are we doing? They finally scored. Score again. Score again. There we go. Defense needs a stop. Defense needs a stop. Defense makes a stop. Oh, my God. Are they about to make a 17-0 fourth quarter comeback? There's a minute 11 left. They are already close to midfield. The field goal ties the game. Eddie's not in the game because they're in shotgun. He's never in the game when they're in shotgun. They're dropping back. Brock throws, and he's got a receiver wide open down the sidelines, and they're in field goal range. They have no timeouts left, but they're in field goal range. You can tie the game and take it to overtime. They just, they just came back down 17-0. Brock, if you throw this, I swear to God, Brock, if you throw this, Brock is dropping back to pass. He's got time he hits the running back out of the backfield that is not eddie he does get out of bounds i don't think he did but they called him out of bounds okay and now brock comes out in the shotgun once again no eddie he's dropping back to throw again he's got time he throws the at oh my god brock you oh my god i hate it here ha oh, brock really threw an interception like that to lose the game that is crazy what a tragic what a tragic way to lose that game as we go on to our next season it is year 11 eddie is going to once again be a free agent he was a 90 overall that season so i wouldn't be surprised if he comes back for some more and as we look at the roster eddie is no longer here you have a 93 brock purdy there is the new running back jones that has replaced him we'll take a look at retirements or see if maybe he finally jumps ship eddie george is now the starting running back of the cleveland browns he goes home to ohio where he played his college ball kenneth walker and him are now tied for the oldest running backs in the nfl we now take over as victor price the head coach of the cleveland browns as we move into cleveland here we're going to take a look at what this team is looking like we have stratton here at quarterback eddie's down to an 85 overall with just superstar dev now they have a 99 overall x-factor receiver and emmanuel moore he's six five dude he's huge holy shit six five two thirty at receiver that yeah give that man the ball um wow receiver two we have baxter at tight end we have baker so we got baxter and baker that's a pretty good name duo we have a backup running back in leverett take a look at what his contract's looking like in cleveland see if he's here for for more than a year it's probably just a one-year deal in my imagination yeah one-year deal worth 10.3 million this is his 10th season i'm pretty sure but this team's pretty good so we'll advance week to the play
playoffs. We will see what happens here. See if this Browns team is a team that could maybe get him on his way to winning something. So Cleveland couldn't get it done for him. Despite having a 99 receiver, having a pretty good offense, they go 8-9, finish last place in the AFC North, and had the 27th ranked total offense with a 26th ranked rushing offense. They got shut out by Baltimore in their last game of the year, 24 to nothing. Austin Stratton, he is not Brock Purdy. He did pretty good, but it wasn't good enough. Rushing, Eddie had 271 carries for 1,162 yards and 13 touchdowns. We'll go take a look at what he did receiving. Receiving, Eddie had 27 catches for 212 and two touchdowns. So two, two is the MVP for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, That, yeah, Joe Burrow's offensive player of the year. We go to best running back where he loses out to Braylon Allen per usual. He's in third. I think Braylon Allen has won this award like four years in a row now, but I, just like that, we're mo moving forward to year 11. Is Eddie George going to be around for year 11? The world may never know. We'll fucking see. We'll take a look at our retirements here. Kool-Aid McKinstry, who came in with him, just retired. We'll scroll down, see if we see a Browns helmet anywhere on here. I'm not seeing one. That's a good sign. He might be coming back. He's coming back for year 11, but he's not in Cleveland. We'll go take a look at where Eddie ended up in year 11. So he's not on a team. He might be in free agency maybe then. Um, He's in free agency. Obviously, I'm going to sign him back. I'm not going to do that for too many years. It's like I said in the last one. He's a free agent. He's 34 years old. He's down to a 78 overall. We're going to bring him back into Cleveland here with Justin Herbert. So Eddie does have one more year in him. And now we have Eddie George as the starting running back once again of the Cleveland Browns as we go through year 11. We'll sim through this. We'll just make sure actually real quick he is a starting running back. Yes, he is. Eddie George, the starting running back of the Cleveland Browns. He's down to normal dev, a 78. You got Justin Herbert at an 84. You have Moore still here. I can't remember what his first name was, but he's still a 99. They now have Neighbors here. He is an 82 overall. They have Buck Halter at tight end now. So the whole team kind of switched up a little bit. We'll see if this year they're able to put it together. They went eight and nine with a pretty bad quarterback last season. And now they have an aging Justin Herbert. See if he can lead this team onto the playoffs in Eddie's 11th season. So something tells me this team didn't make the playoffs. Our head coach was fired somewhere along the way. We will retire him and take over as a new head coach of the Cleveland Browns. We're going to just go through this one as Chris Dale, since obviously that's who it's going to give us here. We will accept and continue. Chris Dale now comes in as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. I'm not going to make anyone for it because I don't imagine Eddie comes back for another season at this point. They managed to win the last game against the Bengals 24 to 3. They went 10 and 7 and still missed the playoffs. Yeah, that's because all three wild card teams in the AFC went 11 and 6. That's crazy. They had the 24th ranked rushing offense, 16th total, third ra rated passing def or offense as Justin Herbert turned this team around a little bit. Herbie threw 4,100 yards, 29 touchdowns. We'll go take a look at rushing where Eddie had 267 attempts for 978 yards and 18 touchdowns. We'll take a look at Eddie's career stats before we go on. 3,383 carries for 16,766 yards and 156 touchdowns for Eddie George. He still averages five yards a carry for his career. That is going to put him on some kind of all-time list, maybe in yards and touchdowns, I'd imagine. We'll take a look at the roster just to make sure he's not here. I imagine he's not. He was on a one-year deal again, and he is not here. Even if he played another year, the way the regression was going, he would be a very low overall. Take a look at our retirements here. We'll scroll down, see if we see a Cleveland Browns logo anywhere. I'm actually not seeing one, and there it is. Never mind. After 12 seasons in the league, Eddie George has called it a career, so I was a year behind on his seasons. It was a pretty good career all in all. He couldn't really win a Super Bowl or get anything done, but sadly, that is just the life that players live in the NFL. We'll go take a look at stats and awards. We'll look at all time. First, we'll look at the legacy leaderboard, see if he is here at all. And he actually is. Eddie George is fifth all time in legacy score behind K9, Braylon Allen, Josh Jacobs, and Bijan Robinson, who is the, he's won three Super Bowls. Atlanta's won three Super Bowls. Right, that makes sense. NFL records. We go look here at career rushing yards. Eddie is here in sixth with 16,766 yards. He managed to pass Walter Payton, Frank Gore. He's ahead of Jonathan Taylor and Barry Sanders. Emmett Smith's records have been broken as Bijan, K9, and Josh Jacobs are all in the top three. We take a look at rushing touchdowns where Eddie is up to fifth all time in that with 156. Behind Emmett Smith, Josh Jacobs, Bijan Robinson, and Braylon Allen is number one all time. The first running back in NFL history to hit over 200, 200 touchdowns is Braylon Allen. So with Eddie George's retirement, that is going to be it for this video, guys. I do hope you did enjoy. It was a fun one. Eddie had a good career. We got to see him score that monster touchdown on a big run and then 
his team throw the game away. But thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As always, that choice is yours. With that out of the way, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.